What's up, Internet? So we're back with another Kai Theory update. And I know we're a bit late. I said we'd do one last week, and we actually did, but we had some slight technical issues, and we lost some of the footage. So we're doing it all over again. But good news. In that time period, we got our Andize version of the Kai Theory back. So as you can see, we got a nice new olive drab Andize finish. It looks pretty badass. And right now, you're probably thinking, what in the world is this thing? So no, it's not a wee whacker. You don't have to kickstart to get it going. But what this is actually is a cocking mechanism. So in unique situations where you either are trying to operate the system at a lower pressure than it's designed to go, or you run out of air, like run a CGS and your cartridge runs dry at just the right point, the spool valve can stop in just the right place that it can't recock by air pressure when you reapply it. So you have to do that manually. Um, so an easy way to do this is actually to just press the nozzle and it'll recock the system. But say you're running something that you can't easily access the nozzle, like an AK. So you have to be able to do that somehow. So we installed the cocking cable so you can route that outside the gearbox so you can easily access it and cock the system. So, for example, we have a brand new SIG MCX here. It's a really cool gun. We'll get that later. But we have it routed out to the grip. So it's going to reach in. Take this off safe first. So right now we're not cocked. Just, and you're going to go again. It's just like that. So this one's hopefully set up for an M4. But with the cable, it is customizable depending on what gun you're putting into. So, for example, you could make the cable longer, you could put a different pool tab on the end of it, you can personalize it however you want it, or for whatever's going into. But you also don't even really need it to operate it if you run like a remote system where you'll probably never run out of air. Um, you just remove it all together and get out of the way. So, you just use a pin going through that holds the cocking mechanism in place. The pin's been removed for right now just for easy demonstrational purposes, but we can just pop the pin out and just lift the system out, and there you go. All right, so what we haven't really talked about before is how you just trigger weight and over travel on the system. So for over travel, basically explain over travel. When you fire the system, you pull the trigger, shot breaks, and you can continue to still pull the trigger after the shot breaks. So you have that bit of over travel after you fire. If you want it to have so it basically stops, it gets a hard stop as soon as the shot breaks, you can actually adjust the set screw here to make that possible. So to do that, I'm going to Quick demonstrate, I'm going to put this all the way in, so basically you can't pull the trigger like that, so you can't actually hit the point where the series disconnects. I'm going to go ahead and put pressure on there, back that out, the shot breaks. So now, it should be, since the shot breaks, you're at the dead stop, like that, so you can't actually pull it past that point. As far as trigger weight, um, that is adjustable by changing the preload on the spring on the linkage system. So I'm going to demonstrate right now, basically by adjusting the screw here, you're going to change the preload on the spring, change the tension, and therefore how much weight is on the trigger. So you can see as I tighten this down, the spring's going to compress slightly, and the trigger weight's going to be a lot heavier. But we'll get more on the trigger weight later. Um, another question that came up is dwell, like how do you just nozzle dwell in a mechanical system? Um, well, like if it's an F2, you're just punching buttons on FCU to change your dwell. Uh, so the dwell is how long, for example, how long the nozzle's held back for. By increasing the dwell, you increase the amount of time nozzle held back, therefore helping the system, the rifle feed. You can't obviously do that with mechanical systems, so it has to be done with a physical replacement of a part. Um, so basically with a fixed volume system, when you fire it, all the air goes out the front, out the nozzle, and the nozzle retracts when there's no air pressure behind it. And then how fast air fills back in the system determines how fast nozzles come back forward. So therefore, how much time it's held back. So to change that, we remove a restrictor that's inside the system to change airflow. So to demonstrate that now, we have a very exaggerated form of how to restrict airflow so you can actually see the difference. So first, we're going to air this up so you can see how fast it moves now. We'll change the restrictor out so you can see what the difference is. And this little guy right here is the restrictor. So it has a little tiny hole through it. And that's what the air flows through from the feed line into the accumulation chamber. Uh, and that's what basically affects nozzle speed. So right now we've got a, a larger one there, like the stock one. I'm going to show you what nozzle speed is with that. So about what you'd regularly see from a normal system. All right, so we're going to install this little guy in there. And this is a, a much smaller hole than you really probably need. It's just an exaggerated form to really demonstrate how it affects the system. So to access it, I'm going to take this apart here, cock this first. Now, thankfully, these are very easy to work on. So even something like this, it's easy to do. All right, remove that. And restrictor is right here. So 
unscrew that. I think this one you can actually see the hole in the bottom of it. Where with this little guy, you probably won't even be able to see the hole. But it's a lot tighter. Alright, so we're going to install this guy. So if that installed, it should be a lot slower. The same exact pressure. So you can see, huge effect on what the nozzle does. Now with the restrictor that we are building the system with, we have tested this for the full pressure range of the system. And there has been no feeding issues from low end pressure to high end pressure, even using 2 8 or heavier BBs. However, there's an option in case you need a little extra nozzle speed, in case you're using really heavy rounds, where your magazine doesn't feed quite right, there's an option to change nozzle speed to help feeding. Alright, so that's your nozzle dwell. Now as far as what you refer to as pop dwell, which is how much air the system, how much air volume the system produces, this is a fixed volume system, so in order to change how much volume produces, you have to physically change the system itself, how much internal volume there is. And that can just be done by adding spacers. Uh, it's pretty simple to do. But that basically covers the basics of the general system. So just a basic, basic overview, we'll get more information later. But for now, let's go on to the trigger weight, which we touched on earlier and a lot of people have been asking about. So we're going to kind of dive into that and show you some more details there. All right, so in the last video, we announced we're doing a pre-tuned trigger out of the box. We originally said we we're going to do an adjustable trigger where you can actually adjust the disengagement points of the steering disconnector. But this is kind of a process to do that, so it might not be as user-friendly for people that are not used to doing mechanical fine-tuning. Um, so this basically allows for a new user to have a very nice feeling trigger out of the box without having to worry about adjusting it to optimize their trigger. Now there was some confusion about why we're doing this. Um, some people were saying that it's probably going to be you know, for, more for speed softers, you know, spammy boys, and not really milsim. When actually it is very realistic. The trigger we are modeling this after is actually a real national match trigger. So to kind of demonstrate what we're going for, we have a real AR-15 firearm here with a national match trigger. To kind of show how it behaves and how it stacks up to our trigger. So first off, this is a real firearm. We are clear. All right. So on this one, very light first stage. Hit the steer, a nice crisp break. Very short reset, then back to the starting point. So again, light uptake, break, reset, starting point. All right. Now. The tune trigger on the MCX. Air this up because it can work better that way. All right. So again, same very light first stage up to the steer point. Fire, reset, starting point. So you can see it actually mimics the real trigger pretty much exactly. And it's very fast to shoot. Yes but you can do the same thing with the real gun. So it's just basically designed to be a very high-end trigger. Now with the adjustable one that we will produce that you can add on later, you can actually adjust it down to the lower end point of being like a mil spec trigger. So if that one, it's just going to be, basically as soon as you come off safe, you're right on the sear. There's just a much longer pull, until it fires, then a longer reset, starting point. Now obviously with that trigger weight, you can actually adjust it to be exactly what it would be with a mil-spec gun. Now I do have a mil-spec trigger here. i kind of show you. It is still realistic as well. So with that, nothing fancy. We just got a receiver for mil-spec trigger in it. Yeah, let's see if I can do this correctly. So again, it's right on this here. And fires, reset, fire. So yeah, we're not trying to make it easier for people to you know, spam the triggers. It's actually just a realistic replica of a real national match trigger. So hopefully that clears everything up. Another thing we touched on is trigger weight. So to kind of see how the Kai Fair stacks up to the real steel counterpart, we actually have a tester here. I'm going to see what trigger weight is actually. 
So to start out, we're going to go with the real AR-15. All right. Two pounds, 9.9 .9 ounces. Yep. Building cock itself. Two pounds, 12. Two pounds, 10. So about two pounds, 11 ounces average. All right, let's go with the tune trigger on the SIG here. Utilize our cocking mechanism. All right, clear this out. Two pounds, 11. Pounds ten. Two pounds nine. So basically, we're within one half an ounce of being exactly the same as that National Match Trigger. So that's pretty cool. All right, now let's do the mil spec against the adjustable mil spec trigger. Might be a little tricky. All right, clear this one out. Hmm. I have a slight problem here. Let's do this. Ouch. I think I screwed that up a little bit. Give me that one more shot here. Trying to let the hammer smack against the receiver. So I'm using my thumb instead. Okay, four pounds, 9.4. I think I might have screwed that one up a little bit. It's 5.1. It's definitely a little trickier when you're just dealing with this bit. Just over five pounds. I'm just do one more. Five and four. Yeah, I think I went a little over on that one. Kind of hard with the actually breaks and you kind of mash down the trigger, but we're somewhere just over four pounds, which is about right for a mil spec trigger. All right, try the draft here with the adjustable one. And again, this trigger weight is adjustable, um, should be tuned basically about the same, but you can go from basically a very light, like two pounds or so trigger pull up to I think some around seven pounds. Don't have the official specs yet, but from what we've done so far, that seems what it comes out to. So, got to pull the upper off of this one so I don't have a Talking lever on it. All right. Clear this out. So we're high fours on this one. All right. Four pounds six. So that gives you an average of four pounds, 7.6 ounces. So to kind of get demonstrate the capability of the system, what you can do with the adjustable trigger weight. You can basically match what your real firearm does for more realistic training, or just for that realistic feel. But that basically covers it for today. We touched on a lot of things. We'll have to do more videos later as we have more updates. Um, 
I know it has been taking a while to get the Kythera out. We've just been, we're kind of perfectionists. We like to make sure the system works perfectly the first time and not just release it once it works. We don't want to release something and then think of something cool to add to it and then send out a revision six months later and you have to buy the next one. So we want to make sure it's right the first time, get as perfect as we possibly can before releasing it. So I hope you understand that and we are trying our best here to get that out as soon as possible. But yeah, that's it for today. Um, any questions, comment below and uh, we'll see you later.